Um, okay, it's time. It's now good. It's just after lunch, and I hope you are uh, well refreshed or uh, ready for sleep now. So, uh, anyway, yeah, let's start. Um, my name is Takashi. Um, I am in regular work. I'm usually working on the kernel side, but uh, today's talk, um, I would like to show you something different. Um, also, it's between kernel and user space, and that's crew. So uh, this is an um, outline of this presentation. And at first, I, I, I will give you a brief um, introduction. And so what's crew? And then I will, and they followed by the basic design and how to use crew and how the crews are adapted by containers. Then we will deep, deep inside, um, deep inside on details of the implementation of the, the crew. So how it is implemented. And then uh, we discuss some. So what is a problem right now by crew? So and let's start from the very, very basic question. Um, what is crew? Um, does anyone in this room have idea what is crew? Yep. Great answer. I love this audience. <laughs> it's almost correct. <laughs> well, it's crazy Russians embed Unix that, well, uh, I forgot that this is video recorded. Oh, well. Okay, that's uh, even listed as an official acronym in the uh, Cree web page. Um, the upstream developers have, have a nice sense of humor, of Russian humor, and that joke came from the git commit message when the Apache is submerged in the Linux kernel. Yeah, it's Linux Torvalds and Andrew Morton, after all. So you see that, you see that message. Um, so the Hannes was correct. The crew actually meant um, checkpoint restore in user space. And this is a tool um, to allow you, um, well, kind of suspend the resume for each user space process or process tree. Or more accurate to say, it's a hibernate resume over your, your process. And with that, you can just dump your running process or process tree into a disk storage. And at any time later, you can restore, restart the dumped process again. And one thing interesting, one interesting thing in this crew is that it's implemented almost in user space. And the primary use cases of crew are like that. So the, one, the first one is very obvious snapshotting and so checkpointing and restart the task. It is especially useful for the um, long running tasks like then high performance computing. Yeah, you want to make sure that uh, your task can be broken at any time. So something wrong happens, then you can restart the task in the middle. And the second usage, use case is also obvious and is, it's more typical. That is demanded by containers and so on. Um, that is a migration of tasks. So uh, you can migrate a process, any process, a process tree, between containers on a single host or between different hosts even. And the last use case is a little bit different. It's a fast start of a task or a container. So it, you can imagine that um, the similar technique used in, by Emacs or Tech. So um, some applications take very, very long time to initialize, to start up. And they read file, many files and, each, and take, so evaluate many things. And by crew, um, just you dump at the, right after the initialization is done, then at the next time, you can resume from the dumped image without any long time initialization. And I mentioned that crew, one of the inter important points is that it's implemented mostly in user space. So why? You may ask why, because um, such a low level thing is usually a task of the kernel. Um, well, upstream developers thought in the same way, and at first they implemented everything in kernel, and that resulted 
and over 100 patches. And well, kind of people didn't like that. Knock. Uh, so they changed their mind. They re-implemented things, moved their stuff into the user space as much as possible. And uh, only the very same small things is left in the kernel. And that was successful, accepted and by mainstream kernel, as you saw in the first slide. Um, actually, the, um, what kernel does in by, with a checkpoint resource, there's a very minimalistic, only a few changes for the system codes and block file accesses, nothing else. And one point to be noted is that Crew has no performance impact on the running, kernel, uh, running task. So Crew enables um, something on check, checkpoint dumping and restoring, but uh, nothing about the running process itself. But there is always downside. In this case, drawback is that Crew has to take care of everything. So every single dirty work is implemented in the Crew itself. Um, this slide shows the development status. Um, upstream developers are mostly working on parallels, and they worked also on OpenVZ and Virtuoso, there, uh, which are long-standing uh, container technologies. Um, the crew project itself started in, um, back in 2011, and soon after that, the patch was merged in the kernel. And currently, there are multiple supported architectures x 64 ARM, ARM64, and Purpose 64 Little Endian. And 32 bit Intel support is ongoing, but still not yet. Um, note that um, these architectures are about only uh, about the user space, crew stuff, and the kernel supports all architectures. And that's easy, and that's uh, generic even. Um, project is still in very active stage, and there are multiple commits each day. And they have even the regular monthly release. And as of today, their latest version is version 2.3. Um, on SUSE, OpenSUSE, we have, well, OpenSUSE, we have supported um, Crew from the beginning. Uh, it's since OpenSUSE 13.2, and that was a kernel 3.16. And of course, Leap and Tumbleweed is supporting, are supporting Crew. And the uh, latest crew package is found always in the OBS develop project, uh, develop colon tools project. And package has a little dependency, so you, you can drag um, to the older distributions from the repository. Uh, on the other hand, the SUSE Linux Enterprise, we did not support uh, crew at all so far. And that's the, um, but uh, good news is that we are going to support in the, at least in the kernel side, it's, it's, it's very 11, uh, sorry, 12 SP2, but still it's experimental and not decided yet. And package is not found in SA12. So if anyone um, is like, uh, to the enterprise customers uh, want to have that, then just ask um, PM, so product, product manager, product manager, and uh, maybe someone in your room, and it gives them the pressure. So um, let's go to the um, basic design. Uh, usage. Crew has uh, three different interfaces. One is a command line, and one is a RPC, and another is a library interface. Uh, the most of programs use uh, the first one, command line. Even the containers just invoke the command lines. And some programs um, use RPC, but uh, uh, as far as I know, then there is no program using library API. Uh, Cree provides uh, two extensions. One is a plugin, and that's a uh, shared object by so dynamic, dynamically linked into the Cree and action script. And this is a script that is exec executed at each uh, different stage of the dumping re restore. Uh, for example, the locking and unlocking network, the action script is used. And the image files that Crew creates, the, so Crew creates multiple files, not a whole archive, but multiple files on the directory, and, each, and even for each process. And each image file is in the format of the Google protocol buffer. It's very portable and efficient. Also, Crew provides a quick um, utility program to parse that image file between JSON and even you can manipulate the image file by that command. 
And the command line invo invocation is very simple. The modern form, there's crew and the subcommand and options. For the check pointing, so dumping, you run the crew dump and dash t process ID and dash large d for the directory to um, store the dump files and more options. Uh, depending on the situation, you need to pass many options, which I will mention later. And for the restoring, then run crew restore and dash dash d and directory and the same option as mostly the same option as a dump time, but without the process ID, because process ID itself is restored by, um, by restore actions. So I will show you some demo. That's the Python script calculating the pi number pi. Uh, see. So, just starting that, and it showed that many uh, random so numbers pi, and so you see that that's a process, and the process. So please remember, remember the process number, process ID. Uh, in this case, one seven eight eighty nine, and. Okay, make. So as far as, oh. Okay, then, then one. I forgot to remove. Oh. So it's, it's an um, empty directory now. Crew and then dump. I forgot the process ID. Uh, that was, I forgot. <laughs> Hmm? Okay. Hmm. And because it's a, the task is running on the shell, that's we need to pass the dash dash shell job in this case. And just, it's killed. So that is a 30,000. And you see that directory here? That's files are created. And this file, so, uh, oh, dump demo one. Uh, okay, I could show inventory. So you can see the each file content by create command show. And for example, um, regular files, I forgot. Then let's show the which files have been opened and they are recorded here. Now, restore, restoring, restore. Show job. And remember that um, the 13, some thousand something we stopped and starting again in the same position. So that's, and, and again. And, and one thing interesting is that process ID is even restored. It shows the very same process ID and the very same user. So that's, then how the crew as adapted by containers. Uh, there are many containers technology on for the Linux, and let's see the which which hub which does support crew. And just first the, uh, the containers by the up, crew up, upstream developers, and of course they support crew natively, and open just on OpenBZ. And the next one, LXC and LXD, they do support also the crew since a couple, you know, I forgot, years ago or a year ago, version 1.1. And the current version supports even better. And the minor one, systemd and spawn, does, does not, this does not support at all yet. And because upstream developers, um, systemd developers has uh, some concern that, um, dependency on the crew. So the systemd does not want to have a dependency by some funny reason. Um, then the biggest one, the hottest one, the Docker. And the Docker does not support crew as of the version 1.12 yet. 
And that was a little bit unfortunate that Docker itself was restructured just at the time that um, crew support pull request was sent. So the Docker was split to the RunC and container D, and that didn't happen. So because of that, it didn't happen. But um, as a result, RunC and container D do support natively crew already, but only Docker does not. And there have been different um, forks for the sub crew, uh, supporting crew by Docker's. And the most promising one is the Rust Brothers branch. And that is also the patches that's merged in the Run C and Container D. Uh, so far, there's no container migration implementation yet. No, not yet. So that there are some more demo about Docker. Um, OK, let's, let's start the very same thing. Um, so we have the Docker. Docker file, so that's just building in the py, py, python dot py, uh, py dot py, docker. So it's done. And running the docker, this one. Uh, OK, that's, that's name is uh, py, and py, py. So it's running there in a the container. You see the container is running. And there is a new command checkpoint. And you have the three further subcommand by checkpoint. So the first create um, by PPP. That's the checkpoint name PPP is created. Then it's done. It's gone. And we can restart again. OK, checkpoint. And there, you, you, if you find that on the checkpoint name PPP, that is stored there. Now they restart the task with a new option, checkpoint. OK, and that's one. Then it starts from that last number. And you can start even again after stopping that. And it's there. OK, um, that was a rather boring demo. Uh, so we can try to something more interesting. So this one is. Uh, to starting an XBNC session in the Docker container. So the whole desktop session is running there. So I can, uh, so now uh, container VNC is running. And I can connect to the, this container with VNC viewer. So starting here and X Tom. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that is. It's root. And something more interesting. And I can start, I can play something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's not good. And anyway, that's. Then again, Docker checkpoint. And VNC, doom. Oh. Checkpoint create. Then it's gone. Then again. It's there. So that works. So, um, OK, go back. So that, that was on how that um, query works. And now I'll show you some of the, um, how crew is implemented. So um, crew uses a uh, um, few very low level techniques. So, so remember that uh, that's P Linux provides ptrace and nmap system codes. These are very ugly system codes. You can do everything. Um, especially ptrace uh, is used by debugger and tracer. 
and so you can manipulate everything. And combining these two system calls, um, Crew implements uh, so-called parasite code injection. So that this is a um, way to running the system call on the folding process. And by injecting um, so small position independent executable code by end mapping on the folding process, and then running that code from by ptrace. And after getting a result, returning the host process and cleaning up the um, injected memory area again and clean up everything. So as if there is nothing there. Also, uh, another interesting uh, technique is a TCP repair mode. There, in this mode, the TCP um, behaves as if that's just behaving the stream, but it does, and changing, changing its stage, but it does not handle any data itself. So it's used for the resuming uh, the network connection. Um, Linux kernel provides many uh, proc files, and there are many, lots and lots of information there, and crew use this intensively. Uh, for example, process tree and pages and mapping VMAs, file descriptors and project timers, namespaces, and so on. And these are all find, found in the proc files. And for dumping the process, um, so roughly speaking, there are three stages. So as first, the crew stops the task, and for that, usually a ptrace is called is used, uh, or uh, an optionally you can use a C group freezer, and by that the task so given tasks or task tree are stopped, and also you need to um, dock at the internet so that um, the stage is uh, so is kept consistently during the uh, dump and restore. And uh, it's usually done by a uh, net filter or um, action script for the net, uh, network namespace. Uh, then the crew um, gathers the whole process information. As I shown there, uh, it uses proc, it parses proc files, or it runs a uh, parasite injection calls for foreign processes to get credentials or memory contents or signals and so on. And these are stored in a dump file in uh, protocol buffer format. And then it dumps the pages. It's done by VM, VM splice and the uh, splice system calls. So the uh, dumping is actually easy. You need to gather the whole just information and the save to file. But the uh, problem is uh, uh, rather restoring. It's a uh, tricky. And the strategy that crew takes is to uh, fake the process tree as if the original tree then it moves to the, uh, the dumped process again. So the first, from the root process, that is a crew restore command itself. So it forks the processes, trees, in the way is exactly the same form as a dump process. Then it per, uh, restores a pro, uh, dumped process information to each process, and it moves to the original process back. So that's a fake the tree. Um, as you see, saw there in demonstration, the process ID was even reverted, uh, I mean, the, so restored the, the original process number. This is done by setting the system call, so kernel, and its last PID. Also, shared memory IDs and system, uh, so IPC IDs, also they are restored by, even by system calls or, so, or system control. And uh, open files, the crew needs to reopen the very same files that's what, that have been opened, and also shared anonymous VMA and so on. And then also restore the shared memory and namespace C group and session ID group ID and so on. And one another interesting technique that crew takes is uh, its restore, restorer. Uh, a restorer is a, a kind of trampoline that's a small position independent independent executable codes. And this is necessary for avoiding the segfault by unmapping. So at cleaning, at cleaning up, you need to clear, so unmapping the, uh, the memory that has taken. But doing that from the original process, you will get a segmented fault. So for avoiding that, you jump again once somewhere outside, and then doing the such things, then go back, jumping again to the new code, that is original uh, process code. Then cleaning, cleaning up the original old code. 
So, um, so far, I presented the crew as if it's perfectly right, working and beautifully. Everything is fine. Sorry, I lied. It has lots and lots and lots of problems. Uh, one of the biggest problems is that it's, uh, if that process or process tree is connected to the outside, then you cannot guarantee that pro that process is restored in the same way because it's outside. You have no idea. So, um, so Q is behaves basically very conservative way so that it says that I cannot dump. Then you have to convince Q, like the small child, small kid, that's, Honey, it's no problem. It's not a serious, serious problem. Just go on. For that, you give them options. So different, many options, depending on the situation. Uh, for example, the four sockets, unique socket, if the only uh, one of the pair <coughs> side is dumped, you have to pass then that's, that's, that's XT unique socket. And also for the TCP connection. Also shell job, if the shell itself is outside, then you need to pass a shell job option to give them um, restore the TTY and group and session IDs. Also file logs can be external and bind bounds. The bind source is external, then you have to specify which bind, 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 bind bounds to be done. And another big, big problem is that it cannot handle device files at all, at all, because you have no idea what the device driver, how the device driver behaves. And device driver behavior is different even on different machines, so you cannot migrate easily from one machine to another. Of course, the exceptions are very generic one, like dev new or dev zero or dev net tone. But for other, any other device, behave, device file, you need to write a plugin for each, so it's very hard. Uh, on the similar reason, um, X application also cannot be dumped because X server has no idea about the uh, client is dumped. Also, more restrictions, this is only part of the restrictions. And the file systems, Clio itself takes, does not take care of any about file systems. It relies that file systems is consistent between dump and restore. Uh, there is one ex exception, that uh, so-called ghost file. Uh, if the file is delete, was deleted, but still accessed, so that's invisible from, fi from fi file system, in that case, file system cannot uh, keep the consistency. In that case, the um, crew just dumps the file content by itself. Also, system v IPC, that has to be in namespace because it's more or less anonymous. Also, names, nested namespace or C group uh, might be problematic too. Also, also, the root permission problem still exists because the namespace access needs a root, ac root privilege. So, um, taking a look at this, all that limitation, um, well, we can say that Crew actually requires the whole process tree to be self contained. If it's self contained, that can be restored, as we have seen that a whole X session could be restored. Or you user has to specify the options at each time, but it's, well, nasty. Uh, however, usually container manage man management tool takes care of that options by itself. And another point is that, um, well, Q cannot be practically used as a system level checkpoint restore. Because, uh, well, on bare metal without device drivers, it's useless. Uh, so it's different from the uh, whole system level suspended regime. Also, there was a discussion that crew could be used as um, zero time, downtime things to, uh, as a live patching. But, well, as far as I say, that it cannot be comparable with uh, system level kernel, night patching, so k-graph to us so on. Uh, however, uh, Skrill is a very good tool for containers or even for high availability, high availability nodes. It's because uh, it um, enhances that container does not have. So that is, well, you can still find very interesting ways that use Skrill. 
Okay, that's all. Now, resource, uh, you can find the uh, homepage in the crew. Uh, that's very well organized and up to date wiki. So, um, I think it's all, time is almost, almost up. Maybe one just question or. Hi. Oh. <laughs> so you mentioned that you can use Creo to, uh, well, in HA environments. So you can basically suspend a process and resume it on another node. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to be clear on that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. That's all. Okay, the timer's up. Yep. Yeah, thank you for listening.